Chapter 1.0 Introduction There is great interest out there in what people can do to improve their longevity. I've been writing books about longevity for 14 years, and I realized there was one topic I had not really covered in detail. That topic is what are the foods and supplements we can take which will help make us healthy enough to lengthen our lives. Improving individual longevity is not just about foods and supplements. There are a lot of factors which all affect longevity, so I have a chapter here which talks about my work, The Ten Principles of Personal Longevity, which covers those issues in more detail. In addition, there are some specific physical issues like telomeres, inflammation, and oxidative stress, which also affect chronic diseases and therefore longevity, and these are discussed in detail. I also think it's pertinent to see what long-lived communities eat, so I've copied some of the key data and conclusions from my book on four long-lived communities around the world to see what types of diets they eat. Some recipes of their traditional foods are also included. Foods and supplements which have been known from historical times and today are discussed in detail for you to learn what the wisdom of the ages and science knows about the correct foods and supplements to eat. After reading this book, you'll have new ideas about food, diets, and supplements you can eat to help you live a much longer and healthier life. Chapter 2.0, The Ten Principles of Personal Longevity Although the focus of this book is on supplements and foods which can help your longevity, this is only part of the picture. You can learn more about my approach to longevity from the ten principles described below. In my research on longevity over the last 14 years, I found many factors which affect individual longevity. I codified this in my ten principles of personal longevity, as you can see below. Next, we have a picture of the ten principles, and I'll read them to you. Number one, real long-lived people exist. Number two, define your purpose in life. Number three, enable your life urge. Number four, the importance of a spiritual connection. Number five, having love in your heart. Number six, activate your vital forces. Number seven, the science of longevity. Number eight, keep your physical body healthy. Number nine, use your intuition for safety. And 10. Implement the above principles in your life. The details of these principles can be found in the book. I even developed an online training program to train coaches and individuals in longevity, which can be found on the website http personal longevity.com. A few of the key factors I determined are my research shows that there are many people who have lived into their mid-100s or even over 200 years. So living much longer than we are told is possible has been done by our ancestors. You need to have a reason to live, especially when you get older, to help you live longer. Psychology is an important part of our long-term health. Having a spiritual connection is very important. It seems to bring an uplifting, healthy spirit down into our bodies. Most of the very long-lived people are also naturally very spiritual. Chapter 3.0 Important Factors Affecting Longevity There are some important factors which affect your body's long-term health. In this chapter, we cover telomeres, inflammation, and oxidative stress. Chapter 3.1 Telomeres and Aging Telomeres are the non-coding ends of linear chromosomes. Through a complex three-dimensional structure, they protect the coding DNA and ensure appropriate separation of chromosomes. Aging is characterized by a progressive shortening of telomeres, which compromises their structure and function. Because of their protective function for genomic DNA, telomeres appear to play an important role in the development and progression of many age-related diseases such as cardiovascular diseases, CVD, malignancies, dementia, and osteoporosis. Despite substantial evidence that links telomere length with these conditions, the nature of these observations remains insufficiently understood. Therefore, future studies should address the question of causality. Furthermore, analytical methods should be further improved with the aim to provide informative and comparable results. This review summarizes the actual knowledge of telomere biology and the possible implications of telomere dysfunction for the development and progression of age-related diseases. 
Furthermore, we provide no review of the analytical techniques for the measurement of telomere length and telomerase activity. Introduction. Telomeres, the ends of linear chromosomes, have already been studied for over half a century, and today we possess detailed knowledge of the structural organization and physiology. One key feature of telomeres is that they shorten with advancing age, which compromises their structure and function. Over the last decade, numerous studies have reported associations between telomere length and a broad range of age-related diseases, including cardiovascular disease, malignancy, dementia, osteoporosis, and others. However, the nature of these relationships and potential molecular mechanisms that may explain them are still insufficiently understood. A particular area of interest in this context is cancer, where genomic stability, cell differentiation, and proliferation is often compromised. Because of their protective function for genomic DNA, telomeres appear to play an important role in the development and progression of malignancies. This review summarizes the actual knowledge of telomere biology and the possible implications of telomere dysfunction for the development and progression of age-related diseases. Telomere Structures and Functions Telomeres are DNA regions of variable length at the ends of all chromosomes. In humans, they are composed of numerous repeats of the hexanucleotide, TTAGGG, and are organized in a complex three-dimensional structure, which is essential for the protective properties of telomeres. While telomeres are double-stranded for most of their length, the very end of the leading strand is single-stranded. This single-stranded overhang is the result of an incomplete lagging strand DNA synthesis, which leads to telomere shortening with every cell division, beyond telomere shortening due to accidental damage. When telomeres become critically short, cells no longer divide. In 1961, Hayflick discovered that the number of cell divisions in vitro is limited, known as the Hayflick limit. In order to prevent inappropriate recognition of the single-stranded DNA overhang, damage, and subsequent activation of the DNA, damage repair, DDR system, it is hidden inside a three-dimensional telomere structure. Inappropriate activation of the DDR system at telomeric sites would result in non-homologous end-joining alternative non-homologous and end-joining or homologous recombination. Because of the progressive shortening of telomeres due to aging, they are often referred to as a molecular clock of aging. Telomere function and maintenance is tightly linked to the shelterin protein complex, which consists of six individual proteins. This nucleoprotein complex is attached to telomeres and forces double-stranded telomeric DNA to fold back, forming the so-called T-loop. Furthermore, with the help of shelterin proteins, the single-stranded DNA overhang at the end of the T-loop is hidden inside the D-loop a short section where double-stranded telomeric DNA drifts apart. When telomeres become critically short, formation of the protective T-loop structure is no longer possible, which would expose the single-stranded overhang to the DDR system. To prevent the adverse consequences like destruction of the genome, a DDR signal appears, cells arrest their proliferation cycle, and gradually go into senescence. And here we see a picture of the telomeres and the copying process. Above, an illustration of the shelterin nucleoprotein complex, which protects coding DNA and discriminates telomeres from other free DNAs, resulting in DNA damage. B, illustration of the closed chromatin configuration of telomeric ends. Due to protein protein interactions and the specific binding of shelterins to telomeric DNA, Double-stranded telomeric DNA is forced to fold back in a loop structure, or T-loop, while the three-inch single-stranded DNA overhang is hidden inside the D-loop. The binding of shelterins to interstitial telomeric sequences, ITS, leads to the formation of interstitial telomeric loops, ITL, and establishes a closed chromatin structure that impedes the expression of subtelomeric and distal genes through telomere position effects, TPE. C. Illustration of the open chromatin configuration at telomeric ends. Critically short telomeres can no longer maintain the compact chromatin structure. 
The resulting open chromatin structure facilitates the access of the translational machinery to genes that were formerly silenced by TPEs. Popular telomere supplements, TA65. TA65, an oral natural supplement derivative that improves aspects of biological aging in humans and mice, increases telomerase, a natural enzyme, which in turn increases the length of telomeres that protect the ends of chromosomes and cells. Every time cells divide, the telomeres become shorter. Eventually, after many cell divisions with aging, the telomeres are too short to protect the chromosomes and cell senescence occurs, associated with cellular malfunction and diseases. Many human studies have shown that aging correlates with shorter telomeres. And shorter telomeres in humans predict future diseases, including cancers, vascular diseases, heart disease, excess weight, mitochondria, malfunction or energy decline, immune decline, and many others when compared to people of the same age with longer telomeres. Longer telomeres are associated with a more youthful cellular profile and health. And here we see a picture of a TA65 bottle of pills. Mice without telomerase have shorter lifespans and demonstrate many characteristics of premature aging, including weakened immune systems and premature graying and thinning of hair. Similarly, several human diseases of telomeres are linked to shorter lifespans weakened immune function and failure of the bone marrow. Longer telomeres are associated with a younger cellular profile and normal cellular functioning. Mechanisms to increase the length of telomeres either with TA65 or by genetic engineering in mice have reversed many aspects of aging in mice, according to researchers at Harvard School of Medicine and the Spanish National Cancer Research Center in Madrid, Spain. Such improvements included improved regrowth of brain neuron cells, new sperm cells, return of sense of smell, increased muscular coordination, and wound healing. No increase in cancers occurred. Mice with excess telomerase age more slowly than mice of the same age without excess telomerase. Studies of humans who have taken TA65 show increases in the length of telomeres particularly in cells that had the shortest telomeres. Improvements also occurred in immune function, bone density, and cardiovascular biomarkers. Anecdotally, patients have noted improvements in libido, energy, and skin quality. As of spring 2011, more than 1,000 people have taken TA65 for up to four years. No side effects have been reported, no new cancers have occurred, and no worsening of pre-existing cancers have been observed. Anecdotally, some cancers have improved. The Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology was awarded in 2009 for the discovery of telomerase to Elizabeth Blackburn, Ph.D., from the University of California at San Francisco School of Medicine, and her colleagues Carol Greider and Jack Shostak. TA65 is a molecule derived from astragalus, a Chinese herb that has been used for centuries. Astragalus itself does not activate telomerase or increase telomeres. Geron Corporation originally discovered the molecule that activates telomerase in 2000. TA Sciences licensed this technology in 2002. The first humans started taking TA65 in 2007. The topic of telomeres and telomerase is the focus of more than 8,000 peer-reviewed publications in the medical literature. Isogenex Product B, and here we have a picture of a bottle of Isogenex Product B. Dr. Mercola and Dr. Bill Andrews on telomeres. What should I know about product B antioxidants plus telomere support? Product B positively supports telomere health by combining scientific breakthroughs in telomere support and the benefits of antioxidants in youthful aging. Product B helps maintain youthful function of cells in healthy telomeres so you can live a longer, healthier life. How can I benefit from using product B antioxidants plus telomere support? Product B's full spectrum of natural bioactive antioxidants helps fight the effects of free radicals and oxidative stress, which can accelerate aging and contribute to poor health. Helps maintain youthful function of cells and healthy telomeres. Helps protect the body from harmful free radicals that can accelerate aging and contribute to poor health. Targets the source of aging, such as oxidative stress. The composition of product B. 
So what exactly is product B composed of and how does its composition affect me? Product B ingredients, supplement facts, serving size, two capsules, servings per container, 60. Primary ingredients, vitamin C or ascorbic acid, 20 milligrams, 33% DV, vitamin E, D-alpha, tocopherol, succinite, 15 IU, 50% DV, vitamin B12, which is cyanocobalamin, 20 milligrams, 330% DV, percent daily values, are based on a 2,000 calorie diet, proprietary blend, 910 milligrams, milk thistle, psyllium marinam, seed extract, horny goat weed or epimedium sagittum extract, grape vitis vinifera seed extract, turmeric, curcuma longa root extract, ashwagandha, winthada somifera root extract, bacopaea, bacopaea monan leaf extract, and acetyl L cysteine, pomegranate punita granitum fruit extract, DL alpha lipoic acid, Asian ginseng, Panax ginseng root extract, berberine, which is Coptis chinesis, rhizome extract, bilberry, vaccinium myrtillus fruit extract, blueberry, vaccinium angosfolium fruit extract, red raspberry, rubus idius fruit extract, green tea extract, black tea, C. sinensis, leaf extract, acacia, acacia nolotica bark extract, plantain, plantago major leaf extract, L. Guahathion, velvet bean, Mucana pruyens extract, Hawthorn, Credia guess, Pinifidia root extract, Quercetin, Boswellus, Boswellus serrata fruit extract, Maca, Lepidium mene root extract, Hawthorn, C. Pinifidia fruit extract, Resveratrol, Harada, Terminalia shibula fruit extract, Shilajit extract, Chia Salvai Hispanica seed extract. Other ingredients vegetable capsule, microcrystalline cellulose, magnesium stearate or vegetable source silica. About the herbs in product B. Several herbs are known by the ancients to provide anti aging benefits. One of these is ginseng, which is a component of product B. Also, resveratrol, a red wine extract, has been shown to reduce cellular aging in independent studies. This component is included in product B2. Green tea is included too and is also known as an anti-aging supplement and drink. Antioxidants. There are also a variety of antioxidants in product B such as vitamin C and several antioxidant plant extracts. Telomere's maintenance formula, and here we see one of the bottles of pills with 60 vegetarian capsules. Super smart telomere's maintenance formula. Innovative anti-aging supplement formula with extract of green tea, 95% polyphenols, and tokamax. What is it? Based on the latest advances in anti-aging medicine, the nutritional supplement telomeres maintenance formula has been developed to protect telomeres and fight the effects of aging. What are the benefits? It contains powerful natural antioxidants to combat oxidative stress and maintain telomere length. How to take it? Take two capsules a day after a meal. It contains magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, L-carnosine extract of terminalia chibula, standardized to 30% tannins, extract of green tea, standardized to 95% of polyphenols, including 75% catechins, of which 45% are EGCG. Tokamax, which is an extract of palm oil, standardized to 11%. D gamma totocrinals, extract of purslane, 10 to 1, portulaca oleracea, other ingredients, akasha gum, rice flour, tokamax, carotec, malaysia. Chapter 3.2 Reducing Inflammation Medical researchers have found that chronic diseases have a link to inflammation. 
However, the inflammation story is complicated. To take control of your health, the first step is to learn the laboratory tests that measure inflammation and the best ways to lower inflammation naturally. What is inflammation and why does it matter? Acute inflammation is a normal reaction of the body to infection, tissue damage caused by injury, or irritants like a splinter in your finger. Acute inflammation is the body's way of protecting and healing itself. Symptoms and signs of acute inflammation. Pain in the local area that is sore and sensitive when touched or moved. Swelling caused by buildup of fluid. Redness caused by local capillaries filling with more blood. Heat because of more blood in the area. Immobility because of temporary loss of function in the area. Fever. Symptoms and signs of acute inflammation. However, persistent chronic inflammation is different and may start as acute inflammation but can last for months or years, or it can begin silently. Unless you measure your markers, you wouldn't know your body harbored inflammation. When activated, chronic inflammatory pathways might even trigger autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus or cancer. Symptoms and signs of chronic inflammation. Persistent soreness, swelling, heat. Low-grade fever of a subjective fever, body rashes, joint swelling and pain with loss of function, swollen lymph nodes, excessive mucus secretion, fatigue and low energy even when getting enough sleep, brain fog, uncomfortable abdominal bloating, food sensitivities and changes in stool. The chronic inflammation theory is new to allopathic medicine but naturopathic doctors have a broader sense of how the body functions and suspected chronic inflammation was behind many of our modern diseases. Conditions linked to chronic inflammation. Alzheimer's disease, cancer, cardiovascular disease, chronic hepatitis, chronic pain, chronic rhinosinusitis, depression, endometriosis, IBS slash IBD, insomnia, Lupus erythematosus, ME slash CFS, metabolic disease, obesity, periodontal disease, and rheumatoid arthritis. Blood tests to detect inflammation. Three standard blood tests help detect inflammation. If you have acute inflammation or active chronic inflammation, one or more of these become elevated, and the higher your results are, the greater the inflammation. The erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR or SED rate, C-reactive protein, CRP qualitative, C-reactive protein highly sensitive, CRP-HS or cardiac. ESR is a nonspecific marker for acute and chronic inflammation. It measures the rate that red blood cells settle in a test tube over time. The faster the sedimentation rate, the greater the inflammation. ESR is a reliable marker to track inflammation. It may be high in older people, but many factors influence ESR, so you need other tests to determine the cause of inflammation. Blood test graphics inflammation ESR. Like ESR, elevated quantitative CRP shows nonspecific inflammation to the body. It doesn't rise in response to chronic viral infection. So ME slash CFS patients with underlying chronic latent viruses like EBV and HHV-6 have a normal CRP level. However, it's highly acute in acute bacterial infections like Lyme disease. CRP is more sensitive than ESR, so a highly quantitative CRP helps determine the severity of chronic inflammation. Levels between 10 to 40 milligrams per liter suggest mild to moderate inflammation. A level over 100 milligrams per liter signals active inflammation. CRP cardiac detects low levels of C-reactive protein from plaques in the arteries. Persistent elevation of CRP cardiac increases your risk for cardiovascular disease. Another marker for vascular inflammation is lipoprotein-associated phosphopase A2, LP-PLA2. High CRP-cardiac and LP-PLA2 signals active inflammation in your blood vessels. Additional laboratory markers of inflammation. 
because chronic inflammation is not associated with acute infection, your white blood cells or WBC count may be normal, but the WBC level in neutrophils increase with infection. And during acute infection, like when you have the flu, your body removes iron in your blood because invading microbes thrive on iron. When iron levels drop, ferritin increases. High levels of ferritin suggest inflammation is associated with infection. However, high ferritin is also found in the blood of overweight people because obesity is linked to chronic inflammation. In these cases, CRP is also elevated. Blood test graphics iron ferrin. If inflammation happens in your liver, specific enzymes including alanine transaminase, ALT, and aspartate transaminase, AST, are high. If you have inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, like colitis, or an infection in your intestines, lactoferrin in a stool test is high. But lactoferrin is not high in irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. Normal inflammatory levels are associated with health. Your body modulates inflammation as part of the response to disease. A healthy lifestyle and normal weight reflect health and keep inflammation in check. Obesity is linked to chronic inflammation. Diet plays a role in systematic inflammation. Overeating animal protein and unhealthy fats trigger inflammation. Overeating arachidonic acid, AA, and omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid, foods like poultry, eggs, and beef triggers inflammation. Adding more vegetables to your diet or going vegan lowers AA and helps bring the inflammation down. Try a vegan diet for five months and remeasure your inflammation markers. The anti-inflammatory paleo diet provides a healthier nutritional balance for long-term management of inflammation. Avoid all refined sugar to lower inflammation and keep your total daily sugar level below 24 grams. 7 Lifestyle Tips to Prevent Inflammation Maintain a healthy weight and body fat. Exercise regularly with moderate intensity. Stay cool by sleeping with a temperature between 64 to 69 degrees. Get 8 to 9 hours of restful sleep. Tend to your gut health. Avoid inflammatory promoting foods. Don't smoke. Sleep and immunity are linked. The immune system affects restorative rest and inadequate sleep alters resistance. For example, when you get sick from the flu, the tendency is to sleep more. Likewise, adequate restorative sleep is essential to manage low-grade chronic inflammation. Unbalanced microbiome biodiversity is linked to chronic inflammation. Bacterial overgrowth in the colon can trigger inflammatory bowel disorders like colitis. But low-grade chronic inflammation is also associated with low diversity, not enough friendly gut bacteria factors in CFS and IBS. Eat more vegetables, get enough fiber, and take probiotics to improve gut health and lower inflammation. Natural medicine lowers chronic inflammation. 10 Supplements to Quell Inflammation A. 2018 Review of Natural Products that Dampen Inflammation found that polyphenol compounds like epigallocatechin 3 gallate or EGCG in green tea is effective in lowering inflammation. EGCG is recommended as frontline treatment for obese patients because it modulates inflammation and reduces metabolism. Devil's Claw, also named Harpagophytum procumbens, is a South African plant used for arthritic pain and inflammation. Ginger, Zingerber officinal, is good for digestion, helps prevent cancer, is an antioxidant, and has anti-inflammatory properties. Curcumin, curcumin longje, is a polyphenol compound found in the spice turmeric. It's an antioxidant and helps manage inflammation. Resveratrol inhibits inflammatory signaling pathways. Many find that natural anti-inflammatories are not potent enough to control the pain associated with inflammation. In this case, you may need a synergistic group of natural products to lower inflammation and restore the body to normal. 
For example, cold water fish contain resolvins, natural compounds found in omega-3 fatty acids that support resolution of inflammation. Without resolution, inflammation becomes chronic. Rules for food at a glance. Avoid refined sugar. Avoid refined carbs. Eat more green vegetables. Eat raw organic seeds and nuts. Get enough fiber. Eat polyphenol-rich plants. Take polyphenol supplements. Take anti-inflammatory herbal extracts, including curcumin and boswellia. Eat more cold water fish and take omega-3 fish oil. Try phytocannabinoids. Take a low-dose aspirin daily. Get acupuncture. If an anti-inflammatory diet, weight loss, and regular exercise don't bring your inflammation markers lower, add natural anti-inflammatory supplements. If these don't lower your inflammation markers enough, try cannabinoids from plants or other cannabis. Hemp is not the only plant that makes cannabinoids. You'll find cannabinoids in Echinacea and indole 3 carbonyl derived from the cabbage family. If plants aren't strong enough, take a low aspirin daily and consider acupuncture. Inflammation is part of the body's natural defenses. It is a signal to the immune system to repair damaged tissue. Over time, if you can't rest because of work or study schedule and are stressed, even low-grade inflammation will cause tissue degeneration resulting in poor health. Chronic inflammation may shorten your life. To be proactive about your health and longevity, test your inflammation markers. Chapter 3.3, Oxidative Stress Prevention. And here we see three cells in a sequence. A normal cell and then a dash to one that's got lots of dots in it. The free radicals that damage all components of the cell and then another cell which looks sick. More severe oxidative stress can cause cell death. Oxidative stress is an imbalance between free radicals and antioxidants in your body. Free radicals are oxygen-containing molecules with an uneven number of electrons. The uneven number allows them to easily react with other molecules. Free radicals can cause large chain chemical reactions in your body because they react so easily with other molecules. These reactions are called oxidation. They can be beneficial or harmful. Antioxidants are molecules that can donate an electron to a free radical without making themselves unstable. This causes the free radical to stabilize and become less reactive. Here we will learn how oxidative stress affects the body and how to manage and prevent this imbalance. Effects of oxidative stress on the body. Oxidation is a normal and necessary process that takes place in your body. Oxidative stress, on the other hand, occurs where there's an imbalance between free radical activity and antioxidant activity. When functioning properly, free radicals can help fight off pathogens. Pathogens lead to infections. When there are more free radicals present that can be kept in balance by antioxidants, the free radicals can start doing damage to fatty tissue, DNA, and proteins in your body. Proteins, lipids, and DNA make up a large part of your body so that damage can lead to a vast number of diseases over time. These include diabetes, arteriosclerosis, or the hardening of the blood vessels, inflammatory conditions, high blood pressure, which is also known as hypertension, heart disease, neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, cancer. Oxidative stress also contributes to aging. What are the risk factors? Everyone produces some free radicals naturally in their body through processes like exercise or inflammation. This is normal and part of the body's intricate system for keeping itself healthy. You may also be exposed to free radicals in the environment. Some sources include ozone, certain pesticides and cleaners, cigarette smoke, radiation, pollution. A diet high in sugar, fat, and alcohol may also contribute to free radical production. Managing and preventing oxidative stress. It's impossible to completely avoid free radical exposure and oxidative stress. However, there are things you can do to minimize the effects of oxidative stress on your body. The main thing you can do is to increase your levels of antioxidants and decrease your formation of free radicals. 
One method of preventing oxidative stress is to ensure that you're obtaining enough antioxidants in your diet. Eating five servings per day of a variety of fruits and vegetables is the best way to provide your body with what it needs to produce antioxidants. Examples of fruits and vegetables include berries, cherries, citrus fruits, prunes, dark leafy leaves, broccoli, carrots, tomatoes, olives. Other examples of dietary antioxidant sources include fish and nuts, vitamin E, vitamin C, turmeric, green tea, melatonin, onion, garlic, cinnamon. Other healthy lifestyle choices can also prevent or reduce oxidative stress. Here's some lifestyle choices that will help. A regular moderate exercise routine. This has been associated with higher natural antioxidant levels and decreased damage caused by oxidative stress. Regular exercise has been associated with a longer lifespan, fewer effects of aging, and decreased risk of cancer and disease. Don't smoke. Avoid exposure to secondhand smoke as well. Use caution with chemicals. This includes cleaning chemicals, avoiding unnecessary radiation exposure, and being aware of other sources of chemical exposure, such as pesticides used on food or in gardening. Be environmentally conscious. Environmentally friendly initiatives like carpooling help reduce free radical production for you and your community. Wear sunscreen. Sunscreen prevents ultraviolet light damage to your skin. Decrease your alcohol intake. Get plenty of sleep. Ample sleep is very important for maintaining balance in all of your body systems. Brain function, hormone production, antioxidant, and free radical balance, and a host of other things are impacted by sleep. Avoid overeating. Studies have shown that overeating and constant eating keep your body in a state of oxidative stress more often than if you eat at appropriately spaced intervals and eat small or moderate portions. Chapter 4.0, Four Long-Lived Cultures. In my book, The Diets and Lifestyles of the World's Oldest Peoples, I researched four long-lived communities around the world as to why they lived so long. These communities were the Hunzas of northern Pakistan, Okinawa, Abkhazia in Russia, and Vilcabamba, Ecuador. One of the major factors is their diet. So I compiled a lot of information about the similarities and differences of each culture. Here are some tables from that book which summarize my findings. Some conclusions on their lifestyles are also included. Lifestyle and diet recommendations. Before making specific diet suggestions based on these four long-lived communities, I decided to make a matrix of both cultural and dietary factors. These factors are rated high, medium, low. Types of foods are also provided in the diet table. Lifestyle factors. And then we have a table, which I'll describe to you. On row one, it says description, then Okinawa, Abkhazia, Vilcabamba, and Tunzas. Line two, exercise. High, high, medium, very high. Next line, naturally pure water. Medium, high, high, high. Sense of community. High, 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 high. Happiness. High, 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 high. Spiritual practices and inner peace. High, 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 high. Respect for the elderly. High, 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 high. Next we have a table of dietary factors and foods. The first line is description. Then Okinawa, Abkhazia, Vilcabamba, and the Hunzas. Underneath this, for vegetables. High sweet potatoes, goya or bitter melon, shima, rakio, okra, handama, carrots, radish marrow, onions, carrots, cabbage, and leafy greens, soya, and squash. Second column, high string beans, cabbage, tomatoes, spinach, celery, dill, Corn, onions, spring onions, coriander, mint, basil, tarragon, and parsley. Third column, high potatoes, mayoka, payoka. And the last column, high tomatoes, onions, garlic, spinach, turnips, carrots, pumpkins, cabbage, and flour. Next line, under description, legumes. High, 
high, high, high beans and lentils. Next line. Description. Meat and fat. Low dash pork, low lamb, low minimal. Next line. Grains. Rice, buckwheat, high trigo wheat, rice. And finally, wheat, barley, buckwheat, corn, millet, alfalfa, and rye. Next line, fish. Low, 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 minimal. Next line, fruits. High, watermelon, pineapple, mango, papaya, passion fruit, shikawa. Next column, high, apples, cherry plums, barberries, blackberries, pomegranates, green grapes, and tomatoes. Next column, high, oranges, blackberries, papayas, bananas, figs, avocados, citron, granadas. And the final column, high, mulberries, apricots, apples, cucumbers, grapes, peaches, cherries, and some melons. Next line, nuts, pine nuts, then achapa nuts, then high macadamia nuts and almonds. And then almonds, beech nuts, walnuts, flax. Next line, special bread. And the first column is blank, and then we see high limit bread, then blank, then high hunza bread. Next line, sugars. Sugar cane, unrefined. Then honey and sugar beets. Then panela, which is unrefined sugar cane. And then honey. Other common foods, blank, yogurt and garlic, quinona, yogurt. Next line, common herbs, blank, saffron and licorice, and then blank, blank. Next line, common drinks, high turmeric tea, high tea mountain waters, high mountain waters or glacial milk, and high mountain waters. And the number of daily meals. They're all blank except for the last column, which is two regular daily meals. From the above tables comparing lifestyles and diets, here are my recommendations for the longevity diet, which is taken from these real-world examples. 1. Drink pure mountain water, but not just bottled water, but water with appropriate nutrients like the mountain streams provide to the long-lived communities. 2. None of these communities are pure vegetarians, but they all have very low levels of meat and fish just because their traditional diets are oriented that way. Meat and fish comprises only 1-3% to of their daily diets. 3. Two communities, the Abkhazians and Hunzas, eat natural grain, low-fat, and high-protein breads with fruits and nuts added. These are limit breads for the Abkhazians and Hunza breads for the Hunzas. 4. Several of the communities have lots of homegrown fruits of a variety of types. Eat lots of fruits. 5. Sugars are all natural or unrefined sugars, whether from honey or from various types of fruits or sugar cane. 6. They all consume high levels of legumes and vegetables. These types of food are the large majorities of their diets, greater than 65%. 7. The number of meals daily are only stated for the Hunzas who regularly eat two large meals daily. My research didn't tell me the number of meals in the other communities. The Effects of Lifestyle Factors In the Lifestyle Factors table, you can see a lot of parallels to the 10 Principles of Personal Longevity. The Principal Longevity Lifestyle Factors I found in my research include Bullet Lots of daily exercise. This ties into my previous research that exercise is one of the most critical factors in long-term health. Bullet Naturally pure water with mountain nutrients. This was a surprise to me since I've heard others tout the benefits of water but never really gave it much serious consideration. Bullet. A strong sense of community. The community and happiness factors both illustrate the need for purpose and happiness to make our lives more fulfilling. Bullet. Overall happiness. Bullet. Spiritual practices and inner peace. A critical factor I've been teaching for years having earlier found that almost all supercentenarians have these attributes which I believe help bring a spiritual blueprint of health down into our bodies. Bullet. Respect for the elderly. This relates a lot to the principle of life purpose. People need meaning in their lives to go on living and being respected and ask for advice. As an elderly person, it's important in making their lives worthwhile. 
If you've read any of my other books on longevity, you will realize that these lifestyle factors are all part of what we already teach. They show some real-world examples which further validate our 10 principles approach. Next, let's look at a new diet and lifestyle plan to apply what we've learned to ourselves. Chapter 5.0, Some Traditional Longevity Recipes Here are some traditional recipes from the four long-lived cultures mentioned in earlier chapters. A. Okinawan Recipes And below this we see a beautiful picture of Okinawan sweet potatoes. Ingredients 4 pounds Okinawa purple sweet potatoes or white sweet potatoes scrubbed. 2 limes 1 quarter cup butter Hawaiian red clay salt or sea salt. Preparation. 1. Bring a large pot of water to a boil over high heat. Prick sweet potatoes with a fork and boil until tender when pierced. 30 to 35 minutes. Drain. 2. While potatoes are boiling, grate zest from limes and set aside. Then squeeze juice from limes and set aside. 3. When potatoes are cool enough to handle, peel and slice into half-inch thick slices. Arrange on a platter, cover with foil, and put in a 200-degree oven to keep warm. 4. Melt butter in a small saucepan over medium heat until foaming. Stir in zest and cook until fragrant. 1 minute. Remove from heat and stir in lime juice. Drizzle lime over potatoes and sprinkle with salt. Note. Nutritional analysis is per serving. Note. Okinawa sweet potatoes, also called purple sweet potatoes, are available at some Asian foods, farmers, markets, etc. are online. Goyo Shampuru, a cultural heritage of Okinawa. Ingredients. 80 to 100 grams pork, 1 bitter melon, 300 grams tofu firm, 1 large beaten egg, 1 dash dashi stock granules, 1 teaspoon miso, 2 teaspoons cooking sake, 2 teaspoons soy sauce, 1 bonito flakes. Method. 1. Cut the bitter gourd in half lengthwise and scrape out the white fluffy pith with a spoon. Slice into half moon slices about 5 millimeters thick. Bring water to a boil in a pan and briskly parboil the sliced bitter lemon. 2. Drain the boiled bitter melon well. Heat oil in the pan and stir fry the pork. When it's about halfway cooked, add the bitter melon and stir fry. 3. When the bitter melon has wilted, add the tofu, miso, and cooking sake. Mix and stir-fry while lightly breaking up the tofu. 4. Pour in the beaten egg. When it's soft-set, mix it in. Add the dashi stock granules and drizzle in the soy sauce. Sprinkle on bonito flakes and it's done. 5. In Okinawa, they have a type of tofu called shima dofu, which is island tofu, which is perfect for stir-fries. It's hard to obtain outside Okinawa, so use firm tofu. 6. I used to coarsely chop pork off cuts this time, but also recommend using pork belly slices. 7. I don't like the unique bitterness of bitter, le bitter melon so much to parboil it in step 1, but if you like the bitterness, you can omit that step. Then we have a picture of a nice bowl of Okinawan-style soba. Total time, 2 hours and 30 minutes, prep 30 minutes, cook 2 hours. This recipe makes bowls of authentic Okinawan-style soba. In mainland Japan, soba is made of buckwheat noodles. However, in Okinawa, we use flour noodles for our soba. Servings, 4 units U.S. 1. 14-ounce packaged fresh Okinawa soba noodles. You can use any fresh egg noodles as a substitute. For stock soup, 2 pounds pork bones, half pound pork belly, 3 quarts water, one and a half cups bonito flakes available at an Asian grocery, one and a half te teaspoon salt, one teaspoon soy sauce for pork seasoning, two tablespoons sugar, two tablespoons stock, three tablespoons soy sauce, one tablespoon Japanese sake. Original ingredient is a wamore and Okinawan sake, one tablespoon mirin, garnish. One Japanese fish cake, eight thin slices, kamboka fish cake found in Asian grocery. One stalk green onion, chopped. Directions. To make stock, to remove excess fat, cover pork bones and belly pork with water. 
Bring it to a rolling boil, drain and rinse. Add three quarts fresh water to bones and pork. Bring to a boil. Cover and simmer 30 minutes. Skim off foam and simmer another 30 minutes. Remove bones and pork. Cut pork into three by two by quarter inch slices and set aside. Add bonito flakes to broth and pot and boil two minutes. Strain, discard flakes. Add salt and soy sauce. Simmer two minutes. To season pork, combine seasoning ingredients in a skillet and bring to a boil. Add sliced pork from a stock pot, turning occasionally until well glazed. Set aside. Pour boiling water over soba and drain. Put noodles in bowls, add stock. Garnish with pork, kambako, onions, and red ginger. Serves four. Approximate nutritional information per serving. Per one half cup is 530 calories, 30 grams total fat, 11 grams saturated, 80 milligrams cholesterol. Greater than 2,500 milligrams sodium, 24 grams protein, 40 grams carbohydrate. Next, we have a picture of Uchina Nantu, which is a multicolored uh, blue and red. Took, looks like a type of candy. A traditional dessert. Ingredients. Four cups mochiko, three cups water, one and three quarter cups sugar, one half teaspoon salt, kanako, food coloring, which is optional. Mix mochiko, water, and salt until smooth. Pour it to double thickness. Cheesecloth and steam from 45 to 50 minutes. Next, place steam mochi into mixing bowl and immediately add one and three quarter cups sugar into hot mixture and mix well. Next, add coloring, optional. Next, sift kanako generously into a 9 inch by 9 inch pan. Next, pour out mochi into the pan and let cool overnight or at least 6 hours. Next, cover with dry dish towel. To cut nantu for serving, loosen nantu from sides of pan, sprinkle kanako along the sides and top generously. Next, Cut not to lengthwise first and then cut into half inch or three quarter inch widths. Dredge each slice in kanako, arrange on dish, and serve. Next, if two tone not to is desired, repeat recipe. Next, pour second batch after the sugar and coloring have been added over the first batch. Next, for this two tone non to, use a rectangular baking dish, nine and a half inches by thirteen inch pan. Next, we have a picture of umi budo that looks like cheese with different green bulbs over it. Also known to be a longevity food in Okinawa. It's kaurla pa lentifera. It's also called the green caviar. It's not cheap for a sea produce here, but it's still affordable. Yes, the taste and mouthfeel are caviar desk. It has some resemblance to Salicornia and samphire, too. It's loaded with nutrients, particularly minerals like iron and others vitamin. That's one more Okinawan superfood, but anything they graze there would have magic powers. So they have no merit to still look like kids in their 90s. You can feel it loaded with iodine and very salty, too. If you like strong taste seafood, you'll love it, but that's surely not for everybody. It's usually eaten raw with some sour or vinegar sauce to contrast it. Next, we have a picture of a beautiful salad. Vitamin C rich hearty goya and tofu salad recipe. Ingredients for two people goya, bitter melon, one third melon, tomato, one half of fruit, tofu, momentofu, half package, homemade salad dressing, soy sauce, one tablespoon, lemon juice, one tablespoon, sugar, one tablespoon, vinegar, one tablespoon. Mirin table, one spoon if you like, optional. Mirin is a traditional seasoning agent unique to Japanese cuisine. Versatile and easy to use, Mirin is prized by both professional chefs as well as Japanese households for its ability to enhance flavor. Mirin is a fermented product made from mochigomi, or sweet rice, koji, alcohol, and sugar. Gekekian mirin enhances the flavor of cooking ingredients while giving a mildly sweet character to create a satisfying balance. Dice cut tofu and tomato. Slice goya and gently squeeze goya with one tablespoon salt about 30 seconds and wash and dry. 
This process is to reduce the bitter taste of the goya. Just dish up. Put tofu on the serving dish first, then goya on the tofu, and finally top off with tomato. Dressing, mix all ingredients and pour on the salad. Enjoy your healthy, vitamin C-rich salad. Overall aging and protect you in numerous ways. And next we have a picture of a variety of spices and foods that are used for longevity health. One, blue fruit, blueberries and blackberries. And here we have a picture of both. You want to protect your brain against aging? Think blueberries. Blue fruit contains many brain-friendly neuroprotective substances like anthocyanidines, which have powerful health effects. Blueberries reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease and slow down brain aging in general. Blueberries are also associated with a reduced risk of heart attacks and lower blood pressure, and animal studies show that blueberries added to the diet show a considerable reduction in cardiovascular disease. A study with more than 120,000 participants showed that a handful of blueberries per day can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. Blueberries can protect DNA against damage, even against strong cosmic radiation, as studies have shown. That's why NASA even studied blueberry intake to protect the DNA against cosmic radiation for their astronauts in space. 2. Green leafy vegetables, kale, broccoli, spinach, Brussels sprouts. And here we see a picture of those items. People who often eat green leafy vegetables have brains that are up to 11 years younger. Also, their blood vessels are much healthier. People who regularly eat leafy green vegetables had about 16% less risk of heart attack. Of course, if you combine eating leafy greens with other healthy foods and with exercise, your risk of getting a heart attack goes down even further. Green leafy vegetables are full of important vitamins, minerals, and health-promoting substances like sulforaphane. Long-lived people who live in longevity zones often eat lots of great leafy vegetables. 3. Dark chocolate, containing at least 70% cacao. And here we see some pictures of dark chocolate bars. Dark chocolate has been associated with less risk of heart disease, hypertension, and even a reduced risk of dying. Giving pre-diabetic patients dark chocolate lowers their blood pressure. Dark chocolate contains flavanols, which have various health effects, like reducing inflammation, keeping your blood vessels flexible, and even slowing down the aging process itself. Dark chocolate can even improve skin aging. This makes sense because the skin and blood vessels are made of many similar building blocks, such as elastin and collagen. Four. Fatty fish, salmon, sardines, anchovies, herrings. And next we have a picture of these types of fish. These foods have been linked to less cardiovascular diseases, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, and healthier brains. Fatty fish contains omega-3 fatty acids that reduce inflammation and are important components of the cell membranes, especially in the brain, eye, and blood vessels. Consuming omega-3 rich foods protects against Alzheimer's disease and heart disease, and aging-related eye diseases like macular degeneration. 5. Seeds like pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, and flax seeds. And here we have spoons of each of them. These little nutritious kernels are filled with, to the brim with vitamins, minerals, and health-promoting substances, such as omega-3, especially in chia seeds and flax seeds. They are also full of fiber. Such little health bombs help you to drastically increase your fiber intake which can also reduce your risk of heart disease and dying. 6. Nuts, especially walnuts. And here we have a picture of walnuts and some other types of nuts. Many studies show that people who eat a handful of walnuts have considerably less risk of a heart attack. Nuts also protect the brain against Alzheimer's disease and improve cognitive functioning, even in young people. Walnuts contain many substances that are healthy for our brain and blood vessels such as omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin E, and many other phytochemicals. Nut intake has been associated with less insulin resistance, improved endothelial function, reduced risk of type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and even colon cancer. 7. Green tea and white tea. And you see we see pictures of both. Green and white tea are very beneficial for our blood vessels. People who regularly drink green tea have less 
risk of heart disease, hypertension, and stroke. But green tea can also reduce the risk of Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. 8. Coffee in moderation. And here we have a picture of multiple cups of coffee, some with cream and sugar, etc. Coffee can be healthy as long as you drink it in moderation, which means a maximum of 3 to 5 cups per day. Coffee can reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and various cancers. Coffee mitigates these health benefits through myriad of ways, like reducing inflammation, especially the kind we see creep up during aging. Inflammation. Specific components in coffee, like caffeine, can slow down the protein clumping that plays a role in aging by virtue of their anti-amyloid agenic activity. Coffee can also have some drawbacks, like an increased risk of osteoporosis. But if you look at the big picture and the aggregate of all the studies done, you clearly see that coffee intake in moderation has far more benefits than disadvantages. Legumes. Chickpeas, lentils, peas. A picture of a composite of different types of legumes. Legumes can reduce the risk of heart disease, Alzheimer's, and diabetes. Legumes are healthier alternatives to potatoes, rice, or pasta, which are very starchy foods that can cause high sugar peaks and that are essentially empty calories. In contrast to potatoes, pasta, and rice, legumes contain more fiber, less starch, and more healthy micronutrients like potassium and magnesium. In fact, every portion of rice that's replaced with legumes reduces the risk of the metabolic syndrome by 14%. 10. Mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms in Otaki and Portobello. We see a picture of some mushrooms in a bowl. Mushrooms could reduce the risk of cancer and boost the immune system through specific mucopolysaccharides, beta-glucan, and lentin-like molecules. Mushrooms are excellent alternatives to starchy foods like potatoes, pasta, and rice, given these foods cause high super peaks, which is unhealthy and accelerates aging. Mushrooms cause much lower sugar peaks. Mushrooms can also be great alternatives to meat. Too much meat, especially red meat, increases the risk of various diseases of aging. 11. Herbs, especially ginger, rosemary, oregano, and garlic. And here we have pictures of all of those. Herbs have anti-inflammatory, DNA protective, and even epigenetic effects. They also have beneficial impact on the gut microbiome. We'll cover these in more detail in a later chapter. 12. Olive oil and olives. And here we see a picture of both with a green background. Olive oil reduces inflammation. It's also good for the skin when taken orally. Olive oil can also reduce the risk of aging-related cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. 13. Apples. And here we see a picture of a bunch of apples, different colors and types. Apples are a bit of an underappreciated food, despite being powerful contributors to health. Apples contain various substances that can reduce the risk of asthma by reducing inflammation, heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, and even cancer. One apple per day could reduce the risk of cancer of the oral cavity and pharynx by 18%, esophagus by 22%, colorectal with 30%, larynx by 41%, and breast and ovary cancer by 24%. Another study found that women who consume more than 71 grams of apples per day had a 43% reduction in heart disease mortality compared to women who did not eat apples. The health effects of apples can be explained by the many healthy substances they contain, like hydrocinematic acids, flavanols, dihydro alcones, anthocyanins, and flavorols that improve the health of blood vessels, immune cells, brain cells, and even the microbiome. 14. Fermented foods like natto, sauerkraut, and kimchi. And here we see bottles of all three. Fermented foods contain healthy bacteria, which are important to maintain a good microbiome. Your microbiome consists of tens of thousands of billions of bacteria that live in your gut and have a big impact on your health and even emotions and cognition. Fermented foods are foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, and natto. Natto, widely consumed in Japan, contains also large amounts of vitamin K, which is very healthy for the blood vessels, bones, and skin. Women who consume large amounts of natto and vitamin K 
rich foods in general, had considerably less risk of osteoporosis. 15. Pomegranates. A beautiful picture of a pomegranate and a part of it cut open. Pomegranate keeps the blood vessels young and flexible. It improves endothelial function. Endothelial cells are the cells that line the inner walls of our blood vessels. Reduces the stickiness of blood platelets and lowers oxidation of cholesterol particles, which otherwise become sticky when too oxidized, clinging to the blood vessel walls and contributing to atherosclerosis. Pomegranate is also very healthy for the skin and could slow down skin aging. Specific components of pomegranate can also be converted by the microbiome in substances that slow down aging, like urolithin A. 16. Chili peppers. And here we have a picture of different peppers. They're yellow, red, green. Jalapenos, cayenne, and other types of peppers contain capsaicin, a chemical compound that makes food spicy and has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Dr. Small points to a 2015 observational study of nearly half a million people in China, which concluded that people who ate more spicy foods were less likely to die of all causes, and specifically of cancer, heart disease, and respiratory diseases, than people who didn't or rarely ate these foods. The authors concluded the effect may be due to capsaicin. How often should you hit the hot sauce? The Chinese researchers found that the benefits of capsaicin are cumulative. People who ate spicy foods six or seven times per week were least likely to die of any cause, but eating spicy meals even a couple of times a week seemed to have some benefit. In chapter 7.0, Ancient Herbs and Berries. There are a number of herbs and berries which are known from the ancients for aiding longevity. Many are from ancient Chinese medicine. Chapter 7.1, Goji Berries. Latin names, major Asian varieties, Lyceum barbarum, Lyceum chinesis. Common names, goji berry, wolfberry, boxthorn, matrimony vine, desert thorn. Superfood type, berry, fruit. And here we have a picture of the berries, which are red, and they look like dried raisins. The following parts of the goji berry bush have also been used in herbal preparations or as food. Seeds, flowers, leaves, roots. History, facts, and legends. Goji berries grow in a bush that develops like a vine when grown in the shade. At the very largest, the goji bush will grow six feet tall and will have a radius of around three feet. The ovate leaves range in length from half an inch to four inches depending on location and variety. Red striations are sometimes seen in the bark of the plant. Although not specifically a thorny plant like a rose, some American goji berry varieties can develop some thorn-like stems. During the non-flowering season, summer, fall, and winter, the goji berry bush may lose some or all of its leaves, which makes it more difficult to recognize. In spring, however, the leaves fill out beautifully and pale white to purple flowers enrich the plant, usually beginning in March in the northern hemisphere. Following the flower pollination, Fruit berries will soon follow. Goji berries range in color from pale yellow to dark sunfire orange to deep red. Sometimes the raisin-like goji berries are oblong like footballs. I've even seen goji berries that are shaped like small peppers. Often the berries are entirely spherical. There are an estimated 85 species of goji berry in Asia and 15 species in North and Central America. It is possible, based on this geographic dispersion, that the goji berry was brought to North America by groups who migrated from Asia, either by boat or across the Bering Land Bridge. The goji berries in Asia and America are remarkably similar. The history of the Asian varieties is better documented, researched, and consecrated in legend and lore, but both the Asian and American goji berry varieties deserve special attention because their histories and health-giving properties are so rich. All goji berries have been studied and grown and are remarkably adaptive. The goji berries grow as wonderfully in harsh, dry deserts as they do in the tropics. Goji berries also tolerate freezing winters and have been recorded to grow well in such places as Nova Scotia and British Columbia. Perhaps the most interesting is that goji berries can handle daily swings in temperature as great as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The goji berry was categorized under the Linnean Latin categorization system under the genus 
lyceum or, or lyceum. From its Greek root, the word lyceum means school of learning. And that is what the masters of Chinese herbalism believe the goji berry could provide. Legend has it that one can tune into a pharmacopoeia of herbal data contained within the plant simply by eating goji berries. Further, some believe that if one studies, grows, and eats the goji berry, it is able to teach you the fundamental principles of Chinese herbalism. And here we have a picture of a goji berry bush with the red berries coming off it. Asian goji berries. Because of the goji berry's extraordinary nutrient value, rich red color, and pleasant full bodied taste, the Chinese, Mongolian, and Tibetan peoples have been growing the alkaline goji berry plant for an estimated 5,000 years. To preserve the fruit, it's often dried until similar to a dry raisin in texture. In Chinese tradition, the spirit or diva of the goji berry is often represented as a young virile female who's interestingly not of Asian ethnicity. Ningxia province in China, where goji berries are primarily grown, has more centenarians than the rest of the country, and the residents of the province age more gracefully. They are more active, healthy, and vibrant than elderly people in Western countries. Of course, goji berries are a key ingredient in their healthy diet. The Chinese hold a strong belief that this fruit can significantly extend life. And here we see some pictures of goji berries up close. Some are green and most are red. The famous Lai Quin Yun, whom legend has it, popularized both goji berries and ginseng and is said to have lived to the age of 252 years from 1678 to 1930, consumed goji berries daily. The life of Lai Ching Yun is mostly documented case of extreme longevity known. The legend of Lai Ching Yun says that when Lai was 11 years old, he met three Taoist sages who were purported to be over 300 years old. They taught Lai about spring water and the science and fine art of longevity, proper diet, and herbalism. Later in his life, at the age of 50, he was said to have met another Taoist sage who told Lai he was 500 years old. When Lai inquired about the secret of his extreme longevity, the sage taught him to consume a goji berry soup each day. Lai Ching Yang is said to have given a lecture at the University of Beijing at age of 200. When the Emperor of China discovered such a long-lived person within the empire, he invited Lai to the royal court. Within a few months of living in Beijing, Lai Ching Yang was dead, apparently either from eating the processed food provided by the royal kitchen or from exposure to the toxicity of the city. Even if Lai Ching Yang's longevity is just a myth, it does demonstrate a recognized relationship in the culture between the goji berry and longevity. By the way, as far as we've been able to uncover from studying the life of Lai Ching Yang for over a decade, his daily tea consisted of goji berries, ginseng, and reishi mushrooms. You can make this tea at home and it's delightful. We often use wild reishi mushrooms that are picked from the forest. The famed elixir of longevity in Chinese medicine is supposed to have consisted of goji berries and flowers picked in spring, leaves picked in the spring or summer, and root picked in the autumn. All of these mixed together into a super tonic were said to keep one young indefinitely. Goji berries are also grown in Tibet and have been recognized by the Tibetan School of Medicine in Malaysia as a superfood for 2,500 years. The Lyceum barbarium variety of the goji berry is said to have originally been from Tibet. Only the goji berries picked under the Tibet Authentic brand are actually grown in Tibet. Others advertised Tibetan goji berries are grown in Mongolia or China. American goji berries. American goji berry varieties are concentrated mostly in the desert southwest of the United States, Arizona, California, Colorado, Utah, or New Mexico, or Texas with some species present in the western deserts of Mexico and South America. The goji berry was an important food source for nearly all Native American tribes in the desert southwest, including the Hopi, Apache, Supai, Hohokam, Pima Anasazi, Navajo, Zuni, and many others. The great Apache Geronimo was born in one of the most dense, wild goji berry regions of North America. The Apache subsisted on goji berries, corn, saguaro cactus fruit, barrel cactus fruit, red seeded watermelons, wild walnuts, wild apples, wild grapes, wild game and fish, 
green herbs, some domesticated beans, herbs such as devil's claw, and spring water. The tribe was known to possess astounding strength, agility, longevity, and survival skills. Benefits Overview The goji berry is an adaptogen, a term used in the world of medicinal plants to describe a substance with a combination of therapeutic actions on the human body. An adaptogen invigorates and strengthens the system while helping the body to deal more easily with stress by supporting the adrenal glands. In the Chinese medicinal system, the goji berry is known to harmonize and increase the jing energy of the adrenals and kidneys, resulting in enhanced stamina, strength, longevity, and sexual energy. Overall, goji berries boost immune function, increase alkalinity and vitality, provide liver protection, improve eyesight and blood quality, deliver anti-aging compounds, and possess a number of additional outstanding qualities. Although often recommended for such chronic conditions as liver or kidney disorders, weak joints and legs, lower back problems, dizziness and tinnitus, headaches and insomnia, hypertension, tuberculosis, and impotence, goji berries are not used for treating illness or poor health as such. Their main health benefit is to nourish the body, to support the body in healing itself by providing a startling array of extraordinary nutrients. Goji berries are perhaps the most nutritionally rich berry fruit on the planet. They taste delicious and are well-balanced for nearly all body types, blood types, and metabolisms. They are a complete protein source and contain 19 different amino acids on a par with bee pollen and all eight essential amino acids such as adrenal-supporting phenylalanine and serotonin-building tryptophan. Goji berries can contain 21 or more trace minerals the main ones being zinc, iron, copper, calcium, germanium, selenium, and phosphorus, as well as vitamins B1, B2, B6, and vitamin E. Contrary to internet marketing claims, the dried goji berry is not a rich source of vitamin C. Different batches of dried organic goji berries tested three times for vitamin C by reputable labs, and they found that the content was nearly zero. Depending on a variety of growing conditions, mature goji berries can contain about 11 milligrams of blood-building iron per 100 grams, 2 to 3 handfuls, as well as beta-cytosterol, an anti-inflammatory agent, and a linoleic acid, an essential fatty acid, anti-aging sesquiterpenoids, cyperone and solavitavone, liver-healing betaine, 0.1%, and antioxidant tetrapenoids. Zeathin and phylacin. Goji berries are some of the highest antioxidant containing foods in the world. They typically contain two to four times the amount of antioxidants found in blueberries. Goji berries contain long chain sugars known as polysaccharides that fortify the immune system. The short and long chain sugars that the goji berry contains include D ramnose, D zyclose, D abinose. D fucose, D glucose, D galactose. About 36% of the sugars found in domesticated goji berries are the interesting long chain sugar polysaccharides. The percentage is greater in wild goji berry varieties. As we age, we produce less and less human growth hormone, HGH. Decreasing levels of HGH have been linked to symptoms of aging. Goji berries are the only food known to help stimulate the human body to produce more HGH naturally. This factor alone makes the goji berry perhaps the world's greatest anti-aging superfood. Longevity and healthy hormones. The great macrobiotic nutritionist Michio Kushi used to say, eat according to your purpose. If at least part of your purpose is longevity and vitality, then the goji berry is the superfood for you. Evidence from every direction indicates that the goji berry is a leading longevity superfood in the world. It has been nicknamed the longevity fruit. Researchers who study medicinal plants have identified a variety of nutrients in the goji berry that may help people enjoy longer and healthier lives. And here we see a man just putting berries into his mouth directly from a goji berry bush. A 70-year-old produces only one-tenth of the amount of human growth hormone, HGH, generated by a 20-year-old. This decline parallels physical deterioration, such as lower levels of energy, 
muscle wasting, and a tendency to store more body fat. Boosting the natural production of growth hormone helps us feel, look, and function like a more youthful person. Goji berries help our bodies to do this in several interesting ways. There's evidence that goji berries increase longevity because they are high in sesquiterpenoids. Sesquiterpenoids have anti-inflammatory properties. They stimulate the pituitary and penile glands, thus increasing the glandular production of HDH. Human growth hormone is a master hormone that influences the levels of all hormones in the body. Remember, as we age, HDH decreases. In order to achieve great longevity, we have to maintain high HDH production. The goji beer is the only food known that is a confirmed secretagogue. A secretagogue is a compound that stimulates HGH. Here we see another picture of a goji bush in a field. The presence of certain amino acids in the goji berry may also promote the production of HGH. The goji berry is a rich source of I-glutamine and I-arginine. These two amino acids work together to boost growth hormone levels in order to revitalize one's appearance and metabolism. Enhancing libido and sectional function. In Asia, goji berries are traditionally regarded as a strong sexual tonic. In addition, goji berries act as a general tonic to improve overall stamina, mood, and well-being while decreasing the impact of stress on our bodies. All of these benefits together are conducive to a healthier, richer sex life. Diminished sexual function is not an inevitable part of aging. A lower sex drive in both men and women can be associated with a decreased production of testosterone. Goji berries help by increasing HGH production, which then facilitates an increase in testosterone production. Antioxidants. Antioxidants protect our DNA from free radical and radiation damage. DNA damage opens the door to every imaginable illness and accelerates aging. Over the course of time, our DNA is damaged by free radicals generated as a byproduct of normal metabolism and by exposure to toxins and radiation. Although our bodies are equipped to continually repair themselves, they can become overwhelmed by too many free radicals, especially as we age. This results in the premature death of healthy cells, which may contribute to a variety of degenerative diseases and to the accelerated development of mutated cells that can lead to cancer unless antioxidants counter the onslaught. The goji berry is nature's richest food source of antioxidant carotenoids, such as beta-carotene. Goji berries contain more beta-carotene than carrots. Carotenoids are natural fat-soluble antioxidant pigments. The carotenoid content of mammal tissue is a statistically significant factor in determining maximal life span potential, or MLSP. For example, a human MLSP of approximately 90 years corresponds with a serum carotene level of 50 to 300 micrograms per deciliter, while other primates, such as the rhesus monkey, have an MLSP of approximately 34 years, correlating with a serum carotene level of 6 to 12 micrograms per deciliter. In essence, it appears that the more carotenoids mammals eat, the longer they will live. Improving vision. The goji berry contains two key antioxidants for healthy vision, zeaxanthin and lutein. Free radicals attack the eyes, and zeaxanthin and lutein protect against and help repair such damage. These antioxidants concentrate themselves at the center of the retina and protect the eye from the most common causes of age Related loss of sight, including macular degeneration, cataracts, and diabetic retinopathy. Goji berries contain perhaps the highest concentration of the eyesight-improving antioxidant, zexithin, of any natural superfood or herbal product currently on the market. Zexithin helps heal the membranes of the eyes and also gives them luster and youthfulness. In the Chinese medicinal system, goji berries have been recommended for thousands of years to improve eyesight. Immune System Booster There appear to be three major components of the goji berry that improve the immune system. The goji berry polysaccharides, Lyceum barbarum, polysaccharides, or LBPs, beta carotene, and the mineral germanium. The goji berry polysaccharides, LBP1, LBP2, LBP3, and LBP4, 
which are components of the carbohydrate makeup of the goji berry, are world-renowned for their ability to improve the immune system and protect cells from genetic mutation. Beta-carotene appears to enhance thymus gland function and increase interferon stimulatory action on the immune system. Interferon is a powerful immune-enhancing compound that plays a central role in protection against viral infection. Research indicates that goji berries contain organic germanium. The goji berry is estimated by the internet sources to contain 124 parts per million of germanium. Germanium has been demonstrated to have cancer-fighting properties. Japanese studies indicate that organic germanium is effective in treating cervical cancer, liver cancer, lung cancer, testicular cancer, and uterine cancer. Like beta-carotene, germanium has been found to induce the production of immune-enhancing interferon. Hydration. Goji berries, especially wild, fresh goji berries growing in rich alkaline alluvial soils, contain a tremendous amount of hydrogen. Hydrogen is what is needed to create hydration. Being hydrated is a function of consuming enough hydrogen. The word hydrogen reveals the science behind its meaning. Hydro was water. Gen is generator. In indigenous desert environments where water is scarce, eating goji berries is a critical part of survival. Supporting brain and neurological health. Goji berries help our bodies produce choline, an essential nutrient that combats free radical damage linked to neurological degeneration and Alzheimer's disease. Supporting cardiovascular health. Goji berries fight narrowing of the arteries that deliver oxygen and nutrients to all of our cells. Goji berries have the ability to combat a key factor that causes heart disease, oxidized cholesterol. Cholesterol becomes especially dangerous when it oxidizes as a result of free radicals and the oxidized blood fats attached to artery walls with calcium-forming nanobacteria to form plaques. Our bodies have a built-in defense system against this, an enzyme called superoxide dismutase, or SOD. SOD is a super antioxidant that prevents cholesterol from oxidizing. Chinese research shows that goji berries can increase our production of SOD. Goji berries are perhaps the most nutritionally rich berry fruit on the planet. They taste delicious and are well-balanced for nearly all body types, blood types, and metabolisms. Keeping Vital Organs Healthy Goji berries are a tonic adaptogen. They keep our vital organs healthy by balancing blood sugar and enhancing the liver, digestive system, and skin. Goji berry tea has been used in Asia for the treatment of diabetes and to help regulate high blood sugar, which is a precursor to both diabetes and heart disease. Several types of phytonutrients in the fruit enhance the ability of the liver to detoxify and guard against the organ being damaged by carcinogens and hepatitis virus. The phytonutrients include betatine, polysaccharides, and antioxidant pigments. Betaine cleans the liver and reduces the toxic amino acid homocysteine, a byproduct of nanobacteria, in the cardiovascular system. Betaine and other goji photonutrients may be the reason why the goji berry has anti-inflammatory properties. Goji berry tea is also helpful for all types of digestive problems and can aid in recovery from digestive illnesses such as ulcers and irritable bowel syndrome. Research suggests that goji berry polysaccharides are responsible for the calming effect on digestion. Goji berries contain fatty acids, including hexadecoinic acid, linoleic acid, beta-alamine, myrstic acid, and ethyl hexadecanoate, and ormus-carrying polysaccharides, which can stimulate the collagen production, and retain moisture resulting in younger-looking skin. Goji superfood product types. The goji berry is a deep red dried fruit about the same size as a raisin. It tastes somewhat like a cross between a cranberry and a cherry with an aftertaste that's slightly herbal. When purchasing dried goji berries, look for the following characteristics. Purchase organic berries. Non-organic and wild-crafted berries are mostly sprayed with chemical pesticides and or sulfur dioxide. Organic goji products are superior in quality, nutrition, and flavor. 2. Select moist berries, not overly moist, 
as they may be soaked in sugar water, then re-dried. The goji berry should be reasonably soft and slightly moist. Hard and excessively dry berries should be avoided. 3. With goji berries, size does not count. There is no relationship between berry size and quality. Goji berries are often classified into four grades according to size, supreme, first, second, and third grades. The supreme grade has the biggest size, but does, that does not always equate with the most nutrients. 4. Select berries that have a rich red color, but not unusually so. And usually red, conventionally grown goji berries that are now sold at low prices may have actually been dyed red by chemicals. Dull goji berries are either old and or low in antioxidants. Below is a list of goji products to look for on the internet or in your health food store or supplement shop. Dried goji berries, goji berry extract powder in bulk bags or capsules, goji berry juice made from goji concentrates, goji berry liquid tinctures and extracts preferably made from fresh wild goji berries not dried, freshly picked berries, goji seed oil, topical cosmetics applications, raw goji berry chocolate bars, chocolate brittles, and energy bars. How to use goji berries. Because of their history as a tonic adaptogen superfood, goji berries and goji products may be consumed daily. A reasonable daily intake of dry goji berries is 15 to 45 grams, a handful. There are usually four to six dried berries per gram. Since the beginning of history, people have used goji berries to make tea, soup, and wine, or simply chew them like raisins. Goji berries may be used, like other dried fruits, as snacks or mixed in with recipes or smoothies. There appears to be some truth to the traditional Chinese notion that when dried, goji berries are added to other foods or dishes, digestion is improved. Goji berries appear to draw digestive juices into the stomach and intestines. Dr. Likaroth Ohira, a Japanese scientist who's invested nearly 40 years in studying bacteria, includes friendly bacteria along with goji berry in his outstanding cultured probiotic formulas. Organic goji berries can be mixed with cacao, nibs, and or many other superfoods, dried fruits, nuts, and seeds to make goji trail mixes. Cacao nibs and goji berries go particularly well. Because of their combined antioxidant content, cacao and goji berries make for excellent air travel snacks. And here we have another picture of a man eating them from a bush. You can blend dried goji berries directly into smoothies, juices, and elixirs. A reasonably strong blender will completely blend the dried goji berries into the beverage. Goji berries can be soaked and rehydrated in water. Goji water makes for a wonderfully hydrating beverage and can also be used for the base of a soup stock. Goji berries are an excellent tea additive. Whatever tea you are making, throw 10 to 20 goji berries into the mix and notice how they take the bitter edge off the medicinal herbs and how they accentuate and synergize all the tea ingredients. Also try drinking goji berry tea all by itself. A nice goji berry tea is a delightful drink in the summer. Drinking the tea is an easy way to make goji berry polysaccharides more available to the human body as they extract from the berries into hot water. Dried goji berries should be stored in a dry, sealable bag or container. They will absorb a lot of moisture if they are open to the air. Chapter 7.2, Ginseng Root. And here we see a bunch of ginseng roots that have been pulled. And it's a long root with lots of hairy, tiny roots. I cannot think of ginseng without conjuring the image of Indiana Jones. Both are often found in the depths of the forest, both are brilliantly adaptive to all situations, both are constantly under attack, and both are powerful enough to survive and thrive. Both are exotic, mysterious, and I dare say quite good-looking, although one has been respected for over 5,000 years and the other not so long. Ginseng is a plant with a root shaped like a human. In fact, the Chinese character for ginseng begins with the ideogram for human. It has also been called the man root because ginseng harvesters think the root is man-shaped, and also because it's purported to be full of manly virtues. One myth claims that there was a beautiful celestial woman who loved to descend to bathe in the pools in the Changbai Mountains of Northeast Asia. Her father was not happy 
with his daughter's mountain visits, especially when she fell in love with and married a mortal. Soon thereafter, a lethal epidemic threatened her home and village. She scattered magic seeds all throughout the forest, and the seeds sprouted into a plant that could cure everyone. Again, her father was displeased, and he imprisoned his daughter in a cave. Her beloved husband died of grief. Not exactly a happy ending to this fairy tale. I'm not sure how many, if any, other herbs have this level of mythology, reverence, and history attached to their origin story. Ginseng is incredibly powerful. It's also incredibly valuable, with large roots worth more than their weight in gold, even to this day. It is so valuable that emperors of China have gifted jewels and honors to hunters, finding unusually old specimens. At one point, all ginseng was reserved for use by the royal family, and commoners were not allowed to access this plant's medicine. Ginseng, Panax ginseng, originated in Asia, and is a class of herbs called adaptogens. Adaptogens boost an individual's physical and psychological adaptability, creating strength to respond to dangers such as extreme heat, cold, viral infections, injuries, psychological stressors, and even aging itself. Types of ginseng. Panax ginseng is not American ginseng, Panax quinquefolius. They are cousins, but their health benefits differ. This article focuses on Panax Asian ginseng. Red and white ginseng. You may hear debate about white or red ginseng. While both forms come from the same plant, white ginseng is very minimally prepared, which means that its beneficial compounds, including ginsenicides, ginsans, and gintonins, are too bound up in the plant's cell walls to be of much use. Red ginseng, by contrast, is steamed, which breaks down some of the cell walls and gives the root powder a characteristic red slash brown appearance. While all ginseng has some benefits, the majority of studies show that the steam form, called red ginseng, is the most medicinally useful. Benefits of red ginseng, energy, stamina, focus. One area where red ginseng shines is in energy and stamina. It is not a stimulant like caffeine. Instead of acting as a stimulant, ginseng prevents fatigue in the first place. That means people can have a long-term boost without jitteriness. It also improves concentration. A clinical study found that red ginseng helps stress people do detailed tasks with better accuracy and speed. The people in this study worked in stressful jobs such as telephone communication, engineering, and information technology. People in these fields can become overloaded with cognitive tasks, leading to a drain of mental energy and focus. Because of that, attention and accuracy were two of the main areas of investigation of the study. One group consumed a form of red ginseng with high levels of ginsenicides, HRG80, while the other group used a placebo. Participants took either red ginseng or placebo in the morning. They were asked to do a tedious error-finding cognitive task before work and after work. The expectation was that after a hard day of multiple cognitive demands, individuals would make more errors. That is exactly what happened in the placebo group. That group made 11 more errors in the task at the end of the day than in the beginning. But in the red ginseng group, participants actually performed better than they, when they were fresh in the morning. Even after a grueling day, they made an average of five less errors. Response to stress. Ginseng also strengthens our ability to withstand stress. Stress can interfere with mood and perception. It triggers increased cortisol levels and affects the regions in the brain, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or HPA, that tend to make us first more reactive, followed by burnout and exhaustion. Preventing these chemical changes is the first step to survive and thrive, even with stressful events all around us. Red ginseng alters how we react to stress by calming excessive neurotransmitter activity while rebalancing cortisol levels in a way that helps us stay focused and alert. Mood. Depression, anxiety, even cognitive changes and memory impairment are related to an unhealthy brain environment with excessive inflammation and oxidative stress. Red ginseng contains ginsenicides that are able to protect brain cells from these destructive forces. Research has found that red ginseng helps keep our brain and even subsequent mood healthy by preventing the death of brain cells. Ginseng's activities include boosting nitric oxide production to keep blood flowing efficiently in both the body and brain, hormone signaling that is associated with clarity and focus, 
neural cell regeneration, and anti-inflammatory actions that reduce threats to vulnerable brain wiring. A Korean human clinical study found that red ginseng significantly improved depression symptoms, including those physiological symptoms such as the physical slowdown the people suffering from depression so often feel. Longevity. Traditional Chinese medicine, TCM doctors, have always considered ginseng as a longevity herb for both men and women, especially as they age. This has been borne out by modern science. Preliminary animal research has shown that daily use of ginseng can extend life by 14% or more. A human study of people with HIV type 1 showed significant improvements in their long-term survival. Women's health. There are studies on red ginseng and women's health, including energy, focus, concentration, cancer, and menopausal symptoms that have shown the safety and efficacy of this herb. One area of menopausal concern that responds well to red ginseng is mood. Also, as women age, they may experience unwanted changes in sexual function and libido. Red ginseng, panix ginseng, can help restore vigor, receptivity, desire, and enjoyment. There is growing research that shows it is extremely helpful for women with reduced libido. Women in placebo-controlled double-blind clinical studies reported that red ginseng significantly improved their sexual arousal and desire. The success of red ginseng was strong enough for researchers to consider that the herb may be used as an alternative to prescription medication for women to improve intimacy and libido. Other clinical work showed that red ginseng also boosted a sense of well-being, reduced menopause symptoms, and increased arousal, orgasm, and overall sexual satisfaction as well. Erectile dysfunction, ED. According to the National Institutes of Health, NIH, about 30 million American men deal with erectile dysfunction, or ED which is often related to circulatory issues that impede blood flow. Scientific research on red ginseng shows that it can be very effective for ED. One double-blind, placebo-controlled study reported that men with mild to moderate ED noted a significant improvement on the erectile function scale from 16.4 to 21. The placebo group showed no improvement. The researchers in the study also stated that ginsenocides may work through some of the same brain pathways and receptors as GABA, dopamine, and serotonin, brain neurotransmitters that are heavily involved in mood and desire. Other clinical studies of red ginseng have demonstrated strong benefits, resulting in improvements in every parameter of sexual performance and a significant reduction of ED. Red ginseng increases stamina, balance hormonal health, and promotes the dilation of blood vessels by activating nitric oxide, the body's on switch, which circulatory activity to the penis to to achieve sexual satisfaction. Cancer and immunity. There are more than 1,400 published studies listed in the electronic database of the INIH called PubMed, specifically on ginseng and cancer. Not only does ginseng help to prevent cancer by protecting the DNA inside our cells to keep it from dangerous mutations, it also helps people who have cancer or are recovering from cancer treatment. In addition to helping prevent slash slow the spread of cancer, it helps enormously with cancer fatigue. Likewise, there are over 100 studies on ginseng and viral illness, including prevention, survival, and accelerated recovery. There are studies on hepatitis B, enterovirus respiratory tract infections, and much recent focus on its effectiveness in COVID-19. Ginseng has also been shown to be effective against many bacterial illnesses as well. Whole root red ginseng. While there are commercial red ginseng extracts that focus only on ginsenicides, whole root red ginseng powder offers a high concentration of noble ginsenicides plus synergistic compounds, including gintonin and ginsan. These compounds not only improve the actions of ginsenicides, they have independent benefits too. They have been shown to improve immune deficiency, inhibit tumor growth, create neural connections, and strengthen critical functions of the liver. Whole root powder means the full spectrum of ginseng compounds are present and have superior benefits. Chapter 7.3, Faux Tea. And here we see a picture of some dried plant leaves. What is Faux Tea? Faux Tea is also known as Chinese climbing knotweed, or He Shu Wu. 
which means the black-haired Mr. He. The scientific name is Polygonum multiflorum. It's a climbing plant that's native to China and it's also grown in Taiwan and Japan. Legend has it that famine struck the village of a poor man named Mr. He. While most people left to find food and temporary work, Mr. He was too sick to leave. He gathered and ate wild plants and roots to keep from starving. One of those was the bitter foti root, which the villagers hadn't previously eaten. Gradually, Mr. He regained his health. His complexion brightened. He fathered his son, and his graying hair turned black again. He went on to live a long and vital life. Foti extracts are used in creams and ointments for skin conditions. Shampoos containing the herb are available to help combat hair loss and graying. It's also brewed into teas and made into pills. In traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, Fo Ti has been used in longevity tonics to ward off aging. It's also been used to treat a variety of other conditions such as constipation and skin problems. But more research is needed to test the purported benefits of Fo Ti. While it might help to treat certain health conditions, it's also been linked to side effects and serious risks. Always talk to your doctor before trying a new dietary supplement or complementary treatment, including foti. What is foti used for in traditional Chinese medicine? In TCM, medicinal herbs are often combined in complex formulas, but foti is often taken it by itself. There are two versions, white foti, which is unprocessed, red foti, which is typically cooked with a mixture of yellow rice wine and black soybean juice. In TCM, white foti is generally used to relieve constipation. It's also used to treat acne, athlete's foot, and scrapes. Red foti is considered an energy tonic. TCM practitioners believe it can help restore the color of graying hair, combat premature aging, and offset erectile dysfunction. It's all you see used to treat headaches, muscle soreness, high blood pressure, tuberculosis, diabetes, cancer, and infertility. TCM stresses the importance of harmony between opposing but complementary forces in your body, yin and yang. Practitioners of TCM believe that disease results from an imbalance in those forces. But most non-TCM doctors say there's not enough evidence to support the use of many traditional Chinese remedies. More research is needed to test the suggested health benefits of faux tea. What does the research say about faux tea? Foti's anti-aging reputation has gained some scientific support. According to a review published in the Journal of Ethopharmacology, some research suggests that a compound found in Foti may help treat Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Researchers have found that it may have neuroprotective properties and antioxidant effects. It's also been linked to improvements in learning and memory in the research of mice. According to the same review, some studies also suggest that FOT may contain compounds that can help treat inflammation, high cholesterol, and cancer. Another study, published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, found that surprisingly high estrogen activity in FOT. This suggests it might provide a potential estrogen replacement source for menopausal women. When it comes to using FOT for constipation, certain compounds in the herb have a laxative effect. These compounds are called athroquinones. However, they may also cause liver damage. According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, several people have experienced acute liver damage after taking faux tea. Most of them recovered quickly after they stopped taking the herb, but some people have died. While some of the early research findings are promising, more research is needed on the potential benefits and risks of faux tea. The herb has been linked to side effects. What are the risks of taking FOT? There are no proven, safe, or effective doses of FOT for adults and children. If you're pregnant, you should avoid taking products that contain it because of the estrogen like effects. You should also be cautious about taking FOT if you have a history of estrogen related breast, ovarian, uterine, or prostate cancer. Common side effects of taking FOT include diarrhea, nausea, abdominal pain, and vomiting. It may also lower your body's potassium level, leading to symptoms such as muscle weakness. It can also cause an allergic reaction in some people. In some cases, it has been linked to acute liver damage in both raw and processed forms. 
Foti and other herbal medicines are often marketed in the United States as dietary supplements. It's important to note that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, doesn't regulate supplements as strictly as prescription and over-the-counter drugs. According to the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health Trusted Source, there have been reports of Chinese herbal products containing drugs, toxins, or heavy metals that aren't listed on the package. Some herbal products can also interact with other medications. Caution is the name of the game. While TCM practices have evolved over thousands of years and been used by millions of people, they haven't been subjected to the same types of studies and regulations that other treatments have. Early research findings suggest the faux tea might have some potential health benefits, but the herb has also been linked to side effects, including the risk of acute liver damage. Talk to your doctor before trying faux tea or other complementary treatments. Your doctor can help you understand the potential benefits and risks. Chapter 7.4, Resveratrol. And here we see a picture of red wine with some grapes in the background. Health benefits of resveratrol, and should you take it? Resveratrol is a powerful antioxidant that provides protective benefits for your heart, brain, and body. Resveratrol in grapes and grape juice. You've heard of an apple a day keeps the doctor away, but a glass of wine or even a glass of grape juice could keep you feeling healthy in a variety of ways, thanks to a key ingredient known as resveratrol. Before you uncork your next bottle or seek out supplements, registered dietitian Julia Sambano, RD, LD, breaks down what you should know about resveratrol's benefits. What is resveratrol? Resveratrol is a polyphenol, a naturally occurring, highly powerful antioxidant. Although you can find it in peanuts, blueberries, and cranberries, it's most prominent in the skin of grapes and shines through in natural grape juice and red wine. Red wine is fermented with grape skins, so it contains resveratrol, says Supano. There's some resveratrol in white wine, but red wine contains 3 to 10 times more resveratrol compared to white wine. The Benefits of Resveratrol like other antioxidants, resveratrol contains various protective qualities that may help your body carry out a number of daily processes and fight off illness. And while there have been a number of studies documenting a wide array of antioxidants' potential benefits that include anti-aging effects, anti-cancer effects, and more, many more studies need to be done on resveratrol alone. However, there are several properties of resveratrol that might make these benefits possible. It positively impacts brain and heart health. We know resveratrol is an anti-inflammatory because it's an antioxidant, so it affects cells in your body by protecting them from damage. Most notably, it helps with brain and heart inflammation by providing a protective lining for your blood vessels and preventing insult or injury. This means it could have neuroprotective qualities and help preserve memory and brain function, as well as prevent heart disease and strokes. Resveratrol and other antioxidants are kind of like saran wrap around your cell, says Supano. They wrap around the cell like a nice layer, so when you have compounds floating around your bloodstream and the environment that are trying to attack and damage that cell, you have this extra layer of protection. Assists with increasing HDL and reducing LDL cholesterol. Zumpano says antioxidants help with multiple systems in your body. A diet high in antioxidant-rich foods promotes high levels of HDL, good cholesterol, and low levels of LDL, bad cholesterol. The foods that you eat affect your entire body, your cells, bones, blood, and organs. The higher the antioxidant content, the greater the entire body is protected from disease and suppresses inflammation, says Zipano. Helps reduce blood clotting. Polyphenols also appear to improve the function of blood vessels and may help slow down the formation of blood clots. Alcohol can also act as a blood thinner, so red wine, when consumed responsibly, can help reduce clot formation. Therefore, if you combine polyphenols and alcohol, you have an even greater blood thinning effect. Potential Side Effects of Resveratrol Resveratrol has a fairly low toxicity level. It's reasonably well tolerated, up to 5 grams per day. Studies have indicated nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and other gastrointestinal issues can occur when consuming higher doses. But these higher doses cannot be reached by diet alone and are usually reached when you consume 
supplements. Should you take resveratrol? To benefit from resveratrol, Zimpano suggests working one gram of resveratrol into your diet each day And that it's important, this comes from natural sources. A glass of wine or grape juice is okay, but turning to resveratrol supplements may not be the right path to take, as too much of a good thing can sometimes present negative effects. Supplements aren't regulated by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, so you can never be certain you're getting the amount of resveratrol that a product claims it provides. Plus, any time you can tap a natural source, you're bound to benefit from it. There's a certain amount of resveratrol that your body cannot absorb, and it's difficult to determine that amount, says Zupano. The case with most supplements is you're certainly going to absorb it and utilize it much better from a real dietary source. Chapter 7.5, Astragalus. And here we see a bowl with a lot of pieces of Astragalus in it. What is Astragalus? Astragalus is a plant within the Legumisoi, or beans and legumes family, with a very long history as an immune system booster and disease fighter. Its roots are in traditional Chinese medicine, which has been used as an adaptogen for thousands of years, meaning it helps the body fight off stress and disease. Today, Astragalus medicinal healing and treatment uses span many different illnesses and diseases. The perennial flowering plant, also called milk vetch root, and huang qi, grows from 16 to 36 inches tall and is native to the north and eastern regions of China. It's also been traced back to Mongolia and Korea. Astragalus roots are harvested from four-year-old plants and are the only part of the plant that's used medicinally. Only two of the over 2,000 species of Astragalus, Astragalus Membranaceus and Astragalus mongolicus are used medicinally. Astragalus contains three components that allow the plant to have such a positive impact on human health. Saponins, flavonids, and polysaccharides, which are all active compounds contained in certain plants, including some fruits and vegetables. Saponins are known for their ability to lower cholesterol, improve the immune system, and prevent cancer. Flavonoids, also found in astragalus, provide health benefits through cell signaling. They show antioxidant qualities, control and scavenge of free radicals, and can help prevent heart disease, cancer, and immunodeficiency viruses. Polysaccharides are known to have antimicrobial, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory capabilities, among other health benefits. Astragalus benefits. In traditional Chinese medicine, the herb was hailed as a protector against stresses, both mental and physical. Astragalus provides health benefits to a number of body systems and ailments. Although more studies in humans are needed to solidify its effectiveness, success in rats, mice, and other animals have prompted progressive research on the herb. Because of the tremendous success of so many research studies and trials, new information about Astragalus is coming to light all the time. Its greatest strength is preventing and protecting cells against cell death and other harmful elements such as free radicals and oxidation. According to continuing research, astragalus health benefits include 1. Acts as an anti-inflammatory. Inflammation is at the root of most diseases, from arthritis to heart disease. It's often the culprit of the damage. Many studies show that thanks to the saponins and polysaccharides, astragalus can reduce inflammatory response and connection to a number of illnesses and conditions, from helping to heal wounds and lesions to reducing inflammation in diabetic kidney disease. 2. Boost the immune system. In terms of reputation, boosting the immune system of astragalus claimed to fame. It's been used in this capacity for thousands of years. A study out of Beijing displayed its ability to control T helper cells 1 and 2, essentially regulating the body's immune responses. 3. Slows or prevents the growth of tumors. Many recent screenings have shown the success of astragalus saponins, flavonids, and polysaccharides in decreasing or eliminating tumors. In instances of chemo resistance treating liver cancer, astragalus has shown potential in reversing multidrug resistance and as an addition to conventional chemotherapy, according to a study published in the Journal of Pharmacy and Pharmacology. 4. Protects the cardiovascular system. 
The flavonoids present in astragalus are antioxidants that help prevent plaque buildup in arteries and narrowing of vessel walls by protecting the inner wall of the vessel. In addition, a 2014 study published in the Chinese Journal of Integrative Medicine suggests injection of astragalus combined with conventional treatment for viral myocarditis, inflammation of the middle layer of the heart wall, makes treatment more successful in heart conditions. Other studies have shown its ability to reduce blood pressure and the level of triglycerides. High levels of triglycerides put individuals at risk for many forms of heart disease such as stroke, heart attack, and hardening of artery walls. During a heart attack, heart muscle damage occurs when there is a lack of blood supply and oxygen. At that time, calcium overload creates secondary damage. Astragalus may prevent additional heart muscle damage by regulating calcium homeostasis in the heart. 5. Regulates and prevents diabetes and illnesses related to diabetes. Astragalus has been studied progressively as an anti-diabetic. Studies show its ability to relieve insulin resistance and treat diabetes naturally. Herbs collection of saponins, flavonoids, and polysaccharides all are effective in treating and regulating type 1 and type 2 diabetes. They're able to increase insulin sensitivity, protect pancreatic beta cells, the cells in the pancreas that produce and release insulin, and also act as anti-inflammatories in areas known to be related to diabetes symptoms. Kidney disease in diabetics is also a common problem, and astragalus has been used to treat kidney illness for many years. More recent studies in humans and animals have shown astragalus can slow the progress of kidney problems in diabetics and protect the renal system. 6. Contains antioxidant and anti-aging capabilities. Oxidation due to free radical damage is the main component in disease and aging, and many elements found in astragalus fight free radical damage and prevent oxidative stress. The herbs polysaccharides have positive effects on the immune system and the improvement of the function of the brain, both of which could lengthen human lifespan. 7. Aids in wound healing and minimizes scarring. Because of its anti-inflammatory qualities, astragalus has a long history of treating wounds. Radix astragali, another name for the dried root of astragalus, has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for the repair and regeneration of organs and tissues. In a 2012 study by the Institute of Pharmaceutics at Zhejiang University, wounds treated with astragaliside 4, the active ingredient in dried astragalus root, showed recovery rates increase 2 to 3 fold over 48 to 96 hours. It was concluded that astragalus is a promising natural product for anti scarring and healing in wounds. 8. Alleviate symptoms of chemotherapy. Astragalus has been shown to help patients receiving chemotherapy to recover more quickly and extend their lifespans. In cases of severe chemotherapy symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and bone marrow suppression, astragalus has been given intravenously and in combination with other Chinese herbal mixtures. Early research suggests its ability to reduce these symptoms and increase the efficiency of chemotherapy treatments. 9. Treats colds and flu. Because of astragalus' antiviral capabilities, it has long been used to treat common colds and the flu. It's commonly combined with other herbs like ginseng, angelica, and licorice. As with many other natural cold remedies, it seems to work better when used when healthy individuals use a supplement regularly in order to prevent the illness before it happens. A regimen of astragalus before the colder months of winter may help to prevent or decrease the number of colds and upper respiratory illnesses individuals will have throughout the season. 10. Provides supplemental therapy for chronic asthma. Astragalus has been used to treat chronic asthma and determined to be a successful supplemental therapy and asthma natural remedy. After being treated, hypersensitivity in airways decreased substantially in mucus production and inflammation were reduced in studies. By preventing or reducing asthma attacks, individuals could be relieved of chronic asthma issues. There's also evidence to suggest that astragalus can successfully prevent collagen degradation, help heal lung tissue affected by bronchopulmonary dysplasia in newborns, inhibit herpes simplex virus 1, prevent the replication of viruses like 
Oxaki B3, a virus that triggers illnesses, ranging from mild stomach issues to major heart complications. Treat inflammation and allergic dermatitis, an allergic reaction of the skin. Help treat hepatitis by inhibiting hepatitis B virus cells in the liver. Treat HIV by protecting T helper cells fighting the virus for much longer. Be used as a mild diuretic. Possible side effects and cautions of astragalus. Astragalus is generally safe to use with no serious side effects. There are possible interactions with other herbal supplements, so start with smaller doses to prevent side effects. Women who are pregnant and who are nursing should not use astragalus as some animal research indicates it may not be safe for pregnant moms. People with autoimmune diseases should speak with their doctors before starting astragalus because of its ability to stimulate the immune system. Individuals with diseases like multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and other immune system conditions could be especially sensitive to astragalus. The following drug interactions can occur with astragalus. Cyclophosphamide, cycotaxin, and NUSAR. This drug is used to suppress the immune system. Using astragalus would increase the effectiveness of this drug. Lithium. Astragalus can affect how the body reduces lithium levels because of its diuretic qualities. Taking astragalus with lithium can lead to unsafe levels of lithium in the body. Speak with a medical professional before combining astragalus with lithium as a dosage change might be required. Immunosuppressants. Drugs that suppress the immune system are commonly used to help prevent rejection and transplant patients and accept the new organ or tissue. Because of astragalus' immune system boosting capabilities, it decreases the effectiveness of these drugs. Some of these drugs, including azathioprine, imiran, basilixmav, simolect, cyclosporine, neural, and sandimune, Daxalumab, Zentipax, Miromonab CD3, which is OKT3, Orthoclone OKT3, Mycophelinate, Celsept, Tacrolimus, FK506, Prograph, Serolimus, Rapamune, Prednisone, Deltazone, Orazone, Corticosteroids, Glucocorticoids, and others. Final thoughts. Astragalus root is an adaptation used in traditional Chinese medicine as a remedy for a large number of conditions. The most extensively researched benefits of astragalus are acts as an anti-inflammatory, boosts the immune system, slows or prevents the growth of tumors, protects the cardiovascular system, regulates and prevents diabetes and illnesses related to diabetes. Contains antioxidative and anti aging capabilities. Aids in wound healing and minimizes scarring. Alleviates symptoms of chemotherapy. Treats colds and flu. Provides supplemental therapy for chronic asthma. There are several ways to use astragalus from teas to supplements to topical creams. You can also incorporate it into various recipes. When using astragalus, be sure to consult with your physician and be aware of possible interactions and side effects. Chapter 7.6, Ginger, and here we see a picture of the ginger root, some slices of it, and a powdered form. Ginger is a popular culinary spice used around the world. Specific components of ginger, such as gingerol, can extend lifespan in multiple organisms. Ginger can protect mice against high doses of radiation that cause massive DNA damage, lipid oxidation, and other cellular damage. Ginger can reduce age-related low-grade inflammation in humans, inflammaging. Ginger improves mitochondrial health. Mitochondria are the power plants of our cells. During aging, mitochondrial functions declines, and ginger can improve cognition, attention, thinking, speed, and memory in humans. Ginger impacts aging via mitochondrial dysfunction and alters intercellular communication. The role of ginger in aging and longevity. Ginger, a culinary spice used for millennia across the world, has been proven to extend lifespan in simple organisms like fruit flies. But there's a lot more to this spice than that. Ginger and longevity. Specific components in ginger, like gingerol, extend lifespan in C. elegans worms and can bring about various longevity-promoting effects. 
For example, stress resistance was increased while lipofuscin levels were reduced. Lipofuscin is called the aging pigment. It accumulates during aging until it's so ubiquitous it hinders the functioning of cells, especially in long-lived cells like neurons. Ginger protects mice against lethal doses of radiation. Ginger can protect cells against damage, not just damage caused by aging, but even against very serious damage like the one caused by lethal doses of radiation. In a rather gruesome experiment, not supported by NOVOS, mice were exposed to high doses of radiation. Mice that received ginger beforehand had significantly improved survival rates. And here we see two different charts showing radiation and percentage survival. And in both cases, the percentage of survival was higher with those who received ginger. Mice irradiated with radioactive radiation survive far better compared to controls, squares, when given ginger before radiation exposure, dots. Upper box, mice receive 9 gray of radiation. Lower box, mice receive 10 gray of radiation. Source, influence of ginger rhizome, Zingiber officinal ROSC, honor survival, glutathione and lipid peroxidation in mice after whole body exposure to gamma radiation. Gigantia GG et al. radiation research. The researchers believe that ginger reduced mortality in the irradiated mice by virtue of its free radical scavenging capabilities and by reducing lipid oxidation. Free radical scavenging means that ginger can capture free radicals which arise in high amounts by radioactive beams hitting the components of our cells such as DNA. Radioactive radiation also causes lots of lipid oxidation. Lipids make up the cell membrane, among other things, and get very damaged by oxidation. Ginger elevates glutathione, a powerful antioxidant that's produced by our own cells. Ginger also induces the production of powerful antioxidant enzymes like superoxide, dismutase, and catalase. The specific forms of damage caused by radiation also unfold during the aging process, albeit at far lower levels and much more gradually. During aging, more and more oxidation of lipids, DNA, and cell constituents occurs. Also, our own cellular antioxidant defense mechanisms decline, such as levels of the antioxidant enzyme superoxide, dismutase, and catalase. Other anti-aging effects of ginger. Ginger has various other beneficial effects on the aging process. Ginger can reduce inflammation, low-grade inflammation that increases during the aging process, has epigenetic effects, and impacts mitochondrial functioning. The mitochondria are the power plants of our cells. One way ginger impacts mitochondrial health is by increasing mitochondrial biogenesis, which is the creation of new mitochondria. The older we get, the fewer proper functioning mitochondria we have. Ginger can also improve cognitive function according to various studies. For example, in a study with 60 middle-aged women, the women that received ginger for two months showed improved attention and better cognitive processing. Attention, thinking speed, and memory improved in another study. So ginger has two interesting advantages. In the long term, ginger can protect the body against damage caused by aging via various mechanisms, while in the short term it can improve cognitive function so we can immediately be more productive and get more done. Chapter 7.7, Turmeric. And here we see the yellow powder in a condensed form. The curcumin in turmeric has proven health benefits from anti-inflammatory to cognitive. Reaching for the spice jar isn't enough, but supplements could be. Turmeric is known for its culinary uses, and you probably have a jar of deep orange-yellow powder sitting in your spice rack. But did you know that turmeric's principal constituent, a bright yellow chemical called curcumin, has been approved as a food additive by the World Health Organization, European Parliament, and the FDA, and is now found in several supplements. Curcumin has powerful anti-inflammatory effects and is a very strong antioxidant, but you'd have to eat a lot of curry to access all of the health benefits curcumin can provide, as the curcumin content 
of turmeric is pretty low, just 3% by weight approximately. This means that a curcumin supplement or a longevity supplement that contains curcumin could be a way to ensure that you get the full health benefits of this potent chemical. And here we see a picture of the raw pieces of turmeric. Getting enough curcumin. Like all good stories, however, there's a twist in the tale. Curcumin exhibits what scientists call exhibit very poor bioavailability. Bioavailability means the extent to which a substance becomes completely available to its intended biological destination. Studies of curcumin have demonstrated that it often has low and sometimes undetectable concentrations in blood and tissue. Researchers think that this poor bioavailability could be due to curcumin's poor absorption and rapid breakdown and elimination by the body. Help comes in the form of piperine, a natural substance found in black pepper. This can enhance the absorption of curcumin by 2,000%, and supplements that contain curcumin often also contain pepperine for this reason. Curcumin is thought to have myriad health benefits, yet in our recent supplement survey, only the greater than 74 group listed curcumins and their top three supplements. And here we see a picture of a turmeric flower, which is pink. Curcumin lifespan benefits. Curcumin is an anti-inflammatory as well as being beneficial for rheumatoid arthritis. It could help with inflammaging, chronic, lower-level inflammation that characterizes aging. Clinical trials indicate curcumin may have the potential as a therapeutic agent in diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease, pancreatitis, arthritis, and chronic anterior uveitis, as well as certain types of cancer. Inflammation also plays a role in heart disease, the world's biggest cause of death. As well as reducing inflammation, there's evidence that curcumin improves the function of the endothelium, which is the lining of the blood vessels, possibly being as effective as exercise or the frequently prescribed ator vastatin. Curcumin reduces oxidative damage from free radicals. Not only is curcumin an antioxidant itself, but it promotes the function of the body's own antioxidant enzymes. Oxidative damage plays a role in various cancers, arteriosclerosis, diabetes, stroke, and aging itself. Curcumin can boost levels of brain-delivered neurotrophic factor, BDNF, or abrininurin, a protein which plays a key role in survival and growth of brain neurons. It also serves as a neurotransmitter modulator and helps maintain neuronal plasticity, which is essential for both learning and memory. This means that as well as improving memory and maybe even delaying memory loss, curcumin-boosted BDNF could be effective in delaying or even halting age-related neurodegenerative diseases. Both inflammation and oxidative stress are contributory factors for the debilitating neurological disease Alzheimer's. Curcumin can reduce both of these, but it can also cross the blood-brain barrier, which is very tricky for molecules to navigate, and once in the brain is able to assist in the clearance of amyloid plaques, sticky, tangled clumps that form in Alzheimer's disease, interfering with normal brain function. Chapter 7.8 Spirulina Spirulina is Mother Nature's beautiful miracle algae that promotes longevity. And here we see a picture of spirulina pills and spirulina chopped algae. Move over acai and goji berries. Mother Nature's superfoods are skyrocketing health because they contain tons of impressive healing properties. Although both spirulina and chlorella are both considered superfoods, they differ slightly in their nutritional value. The healthier of the two is arguably spirulina which contains more essential amino acids, B vitamins, protein, iron, and vitamins C, D, and E, while chlorelina still holds an abundance of health benefits. Chlorelina is a freshwater green algae that offers a host of health benefits that truly make it an awesome superfood and a natural food supplement. Spirulina. Typically, spirulina is known to be found in Africa and South America, but can be easily harvested all around the world in a range of different climates. Spirulina is rich in protein and has superb nutritional value, which is similar to that of chlorelina or sea kelp. 
For most people, knowledge of spirulina stops at knowing that it's a healthy ingredient listed on certain supplements and beverages. Spirulina is a unique blue-green algae. It is a multicellular organism called cyanobacteria. Its beautiful dark greenish-blue color is very eye-catching and immediately recognizable. Spirulina is a close cousin of chlorella and related to other rich, robust sea vegetables, including sea kelp, dulci, and nori. It contains all the essential amino acids that we need. The quality of the protein found in spirulina is considered excellent and comparable to that of eggs. Spirulina is also great because it's an anti-inflammatory agent. Spirulina health benefits. Combats poisoning from heavy metals and other toxins. Spirulina contains a ton of protein. Spirulina also contains numerous other vitamins and minerals in high amounts. Fights your allergies. Protects bone health. Fights radiation sickness. Spirulina is also great because it's an anti-inflammatory agent. Spirulina can fight oxidative stress in your body. It regulates your blood pressure. Balances cholesterol levels and reduces triglycerides. It enhances your workouts. Stops LDL cholesterol from getting oxidized, potentially fighting cancer, particularly the oral variety. You may be able to counteract anemia using spirulina. Regulates your blood sugar levels and prevents or treats diabetes. Possibly combats liver damage. Increases satiety and aids weight loss. Spirulina can produce GLA, a healthy type of fat. Treats candida affections. Spirulina may help patients with HVI slash AIDS to manage the condition. Protects your skin from free radical damage. Possibly treats hepatitis C. Reduces your chances of getting a stroke. Increased growth of healthy intestinal bacteria. Increased immune system response protecting against a range of infectious diseases. Possibly treating ADHD symptoms and anemia. Treats arthritis, pain, and inflammation. Millions of healthy people are reaping the benefits of both major superfoods in this package, and the best part is that it's organic and comes at a fraction of the price of competitors. And here we see a picture showing spirulina on the left versus steak on the right. Protein, 57 grams. Protein, 25 grams. Iron, 158%. Iron, 13%. Calcium, 12%. On the right, calcium, 1%. Fat, 8 grams. Fat, 19 grams. Key points. In 1967, the International Association of Applied Microbiology declared that it is a wonderful food source. However, hundreds of years before that, the Aztecs and others in Mesoamerica made spirulina into cakes called tequitlatl, as observed by a soldier of Cortez. Samples of a cake referred to as dehi was made by members of the Kanembu tribe in Chad, Africa, was analyzed by French physicologist Pierre Danegard. It has more protein than cholera, is a much better source of GLA, 12 times more protein than beef, higher concentration of phyocyanin, one of the world's leading sources of gamma-linolic acid GLA, the most powerful anti-inflammatory agent that exists in nature, GLA is also extremely beneficial for women as it can ease the symptoms of PMS. It also contains 26 times the calcium of milk, which makes an excellent nutritional supplement for women. It has four times the antioxidant ability of blueberries. This particular algae is very high in vitamin A, and this vitamin is exceptionally beneficial for healthy eyes, making it an excellent supplement for anyone wanting to improve their health. Eating more carrots has long been recommended to those looking to improve their eye health, but spirulina actually has 10 times the vitamin A concentration compared to carrots. Effective at helping remove toxins from the blood stream, as it easily binds to heavy metals and radioactive isotopes, that makes it very beneficial for people undergoing radioactive therapy. It's also a great source of vitamin E, vitamin B1, thiamine, vitamin B2, riboflavin, B3, nicotinamide, B6, peroxidine, B9, folic acid, B12, cobalamin, and vitamins K1 and K2. 
as well as potassium, zinc, chromium, copper, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, and selenium. 